All right, good afternoon. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Welcome to our virtual fall open house for 2021. Uh, my name is Lauren Samuelson and I'm an assistant director of admission here at Center College. And I'm super excited that you are tuning in with us today. And this is gonna be a really hopefully fruitful and exciting session for you to learn more about Center um, and our application process. So you'll get to meet members of our admission team today and some of our current students. Um, and we're really excited just to talk about a place that means a lot to us. So. Um, we will have an ASL interpreter on screen with us. So if you need those services, they are on screen for you. Um, and this will also be recorded. And so you can find this session later on YouTube um, if you have questions that you wanna go back to as well. Um, when you're viewing today, it's best to hide non-video participants so that you're able to focus on who's on screen and who's presenting. And it's also helpful to watch in gallery view so you're able to see all of our student panelists. Um, but if you prefer speaker view, that's also a great option too. Um, today's schedule, we're going to start with a welcome from our Dean of Admission and Financial Aid, Bob Nesmith. Then we're going to go into a common app overview and application information for Center with Thomas Becker. Then we will have a student panel with four really fantastic Center ambassadors. And then we will have a financial aid kind of one-on-one -on -one with David DeWitt. And then Clay Taylor will be closing us out and kind of talking more about how you can stay in touch with us. Um, if you have questions today, feel free to use the chat. We will have several of our admission counselors that are on the chat and happy to answer questions as we're going through. And also know that you can email us after the event if you have other questions as well. We're so excited to have students tuning in today from 15 different states and 20 different countries all over the world, which is really cool that people from all over the world are considering Center and want to know more about our application process. Um, and we just feel really fortunate that you're spending the afternoon here with us. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to use the chat and we hope you enjoy this hour to spend with us. But I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Bob. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so glad that you are here with us virtually today on uh, what is in Danville, Kentucky, a beautiful almost fall day. Uh, it's about 73 degrees outside, the sun's out, uh, the air in the morning was crisp and cool. Uh, it's just a, a beautiful time of year here. Uh, it's an exciting time on our campus. All of our students are back in person. Um, we're doing classes fully in person. Uh, we've taken a lot of measures to ensure everyone is safe and healthy, uh, and they seem to be working very well so far. Um, so it's great to have a, an active, vibrant campus community again. It's an exciting time in the life of the college generally. Um, we're getting ready to inaugurate a new president, Dr. Milton Moreland, uh, who's brought uh, a really exciting new vision to the college. Um, we have opened uh, a couple new facilities recently, including an expanded and renovated hall for physical and computational sciences. Um, we launched a new business major uh, that started actually just this fall uh, for incoming students. Um, and we're breaking ground here in a month on a $50 million wellness complex uh, that will be state-of-the-art facility for athletics and wellness. Uh, really exciting stuff. Uh, as part of that project, we're also going to do some major improvements to our residence halls, especially some of the ones that our first-year students will live in. And all of that means you'll be coming to a place that's um, changing, uh, that's getting better, uh, and that is a really fun and exciting place to be. I wanna say, oh, maybe three things uh, about the process that uh, you're really probably feeling neck deep in at this point, uh, applying to colleges. Um, the first is uh, a bit of advice. This process inevitably invites you to attach your own self-worth to the outcomes of the process. Everything in our culture tells you that, um, either explicitly or tacitly. Um, and it's a really hard thing, but a really important thing to remember that the outcomes of this process have nothing to do with your value as a human being with your strengths 
uh, and your talents um, that you have to offer the world. Um, hold on to that fact. Um, approach the process with confidence, uh, knowing that you have a lot to offer um, and putting your best foot forward. Um, but, but focus uh, as you go forward on, um, on a little bit of, of self-knowledge, knowing your strengths, knowing what you have to give, um, and knowing what you want and what is right for you. Um, stay focused on that. Focus on finding the right match, not winning the competition, um, and, uh, and stay open to possibilities. Um, don't be afraid to get off the beaten path in your college search. Don't be afraid to look at interesting possibilities that maybe you hadn't heard of a year ago. Um, if you do those things, uh, I think that you increase your chances for not only uh, great outcomes in the process, but also a healthy journey uh, along the way that'll be less stressful for you. Second point, this journey is gonna have a happy ending for you. You're gonna go to college. College is awesome. It's gonna be a great experience. And there's a whole bunch of places that could be right for you. Also, college is mostly what you make of it and put into it. Um, so know that there's, uh, there's not a single prize that you have to get for this to be successful. There's a lot of different um, places where you could be happy and successful. Um, and, uh, and, and guiding yourself towards uh, a set of those possibilities, knowing that, uh, that there's a lot of successful ends to this journey uh, will help you keep your sanity along the way. The third thing I want to tell you is that uh, is a bit about our role in the process as admission staff. Um, we're here to help guide. Uh, we're here to advocate for you in the process. Uh, we're here to give you information you need uh, and help you know what questions to ask to make a good decision for yourself. If we help you make a good decision for yourself, whether it's for center or another place, we've done our job well. Um, it's a personal process. At a place like Center College, um, it's a highly personal process. And the more you engage with us, the more we can be helpful to you. So as you get emails from that person who is your admission counselor, as you get opportunities to connect over Zoom, uh, as you get the chance to come to campus uh, and meet with us personally, or maybe do so in your hometown where you live, um, take advantage of those opportunities. Don't be afraid. Uh, think of them not as um, opportunities where you are going to be evaluated, but as chances for you to evaluate us and ask us questions um, and enter it into it with that mindset. We're here to help and we look forward to doing so. It's our favorite part of the work we do. Thank you for your interest in Center. Thank you for your um, engagement today. Uh, and I will now pass things over, I think, to Thomas Becker. Thanks, Bob. Um, howdy, everyone. I'm so glad you all have decided to join us today. My name is Thomas Becker. I'm an assistant director of admission at Center. I'm also a very proud 2015 Center grad. Um, so I'm going to go over some nuts and bolts of the process. And I'm going to share my screen. And we're all going to keep our fingers crossed that this works really well and that we can all see my screen right now. And if you can't see it, one of my colleagues will chime in. So, we're gonna look specifically at the Common App. Um, Center is a Common App exclusive school, but we hope that the information that you're going to get right now is stuff that is going to be relevant to you regardless of where you're going to be applying, right? So diving right in, you might be wondering, what is the Common Application? It is a single application that is used by over 900 colleges and universities. And the goals of the Common App are fourfold. They wanted to create an application that was simple, accessible, able to support students, and service-oriented. That doesn't mean community service. That means that they want to be able to provide a product 
that works really well across the board at lots of different schools. And like I said, we're Common App exclusive. So we don't have a special center college application. It's the same application that you're probably gonna be using to apply to other schools as well. There are five key aspects of the Common Application. They are listed here, and we're gonna talk about each of them in turn. So the first is nuts and bolts. This is mostly biographical information, parent, guardian, household data, and the contacts for your guidance counselors, teachers, or CBO participant liaisons, advisors. Um, this is important information that kind of sets the stage, gets all of our documents, you know, get our ducks in a row, I guess is this type of information. This is stuff that you probably aren't going to have to go hunt and find. You're not gonna need to necessarily be creative. We'll get into the creative piece here in a second. The second part are your letters of recommendation. The first thing you should absolutely know about Center College and our application review process, specifically when it comes to these recommendations, is that we read them. We hope that you are going to ask someone who knows you as a learner to recommend you to Center College and to your other places you're applying as well. But we want someone who can speak to you not only as a student in the classroom, this is going to be an academic experience at Center, but also someone who's a member of your community who can say, this is the way that this person has engaged with other people, with the activities available to them, with their life outside of the classroom. So we really like when we can see a full picture painted, not just this person's a great student and that's all I know about them. As personal as these can be, they're more helpful to us that way. We don't have a limit on the number of recommendations you send us. We will read everything you send us, but you do kind of reach a plateau at a point where if you are getting lots of people saying you're awesome, we're gonna believe two people saying you're awesome, just like we're gonna believe 20 people saying you're awesome. The third piece of this puzzle are your activities. Um, these are going to be in wide variety. The first thing I'll say about this is that the order in which you list your activities matters. It will be the order in which we read them, and it's the order that every college or university will read them. So you might want to be thinking about what are the things that are especially important or the things that I want to highlight at the beginning. Don't save your 20 hour a week, 52 weeks a year commitment and slide it in at the very end, right? Start painting that picture with the largest pieces first and then fill in the gaps. Detail also matters. Please don't tell me about an organization in your hometown that I may not have heard of and say, I was a member of the Brick Brigade. Well, I don't know what the Brick Brigade is. So make sure you are telling me what that activity is in the same breath that you are explaining it to me, right? Yeah, I, I need a little bit more detail. But there is something, and this is what I hope you take away from number three here, things that don't matter the activities themselves. I think it's one of the most out there myths about the college application process that colleges and universities look for well-rounded students. We look for a well-rounded class. We need your gifts, talents, and passions that are uniquely yours to create that robust, well-formed class. There is no way that a single student could do that for us. So we want you to be participating in and engaging with things that are necessary and important to you. This doesn't mean that you need to join a whole bunch of clubs and organizations. We want to see that you are growing and developing as a human being, that you are engaging with responsibility in whatever form that's going to take. We encourage you to put any household obligations or work obligations in this activities list because ultimately we want to know how you're spending your time beyond being an academic. There's a lot more to being a student at any college or university than just spending time in the classroom and attending to your studies. The fourth piece of our puzzle here is twofold. The first is the essay. Um, these both fall under the personal statements category. The essay, this is directly from the Common App. You are to write clearly and concisely on a selected topic. Those three elements are each very important. We value clarity in your writing. 
we value a relative lack of verbosity in your writing, you know, say, say what you say and say nothing more. And on a selected topic, there are a bevy of different options available to you on the Common App. And there's also the tell us an essay that they haven't given you a prompt for, right? So ultimately, we want to hear your voice coming out in the essay, right? Don't give me an essay that you wrote for English class that doesn't really tell me anything about you. It's really important that we get to know you beyond what we're seeing on the rest of the application. This is the time that you have to be truly narrative. I would also strongly encourage, very strongly encourage, that you proofread everything. Everything? Everything. Um, it is distracting for us as we go through applications that are riddled with very easily correctable mistakes, and we get it. Mistakes happen. That's A-OK. -okay. You might even recycle an essay and just change the name of the school. We get it. It happens. But the less that happens, the less distracted we are as we're engaging with your application. The other part, and this is new to the common application in the personal statements area, are external impacts. So you are invited to talk about some things that might have disrupted your high school learning experience. This could be COVID-19. This could be a natural disaster or any other disruption to your community. That doesn't mean your community where you live. It could be your school. It could be your family or your household. Whatever that's going to look like, we want to know about it. And you might be afraid of this question. You don't want to overshare. The more information you can give us, like Bob said earlier, is going to help us better serve you in this process. We want to be your advocates. We want to know what's going on with you. The more you can share, the more we can help, and the more we can place you in a specific context in which you have lived and learned, especially when it comes to these past couple of years. The final piece is center supplemental question, which is, in brief, why center? We want your honesty briefly and specifically. Please, please, please. Don't cut and paste from our website. It's a great website with lots of really fun, clever things on there. But I would encourage you to perhaps just approach this from, this is why I'm applying to Center. It doesn't need to be earth shattering. It might be, it doesn't have to be. Tell us why you're interested in coming to our school. We want you to paint a picture that is true to your best self, right? Don't necessarily say, oh, I'm only applying because my parents are making me. That's not really a helpful piece of information. But we want to know what about center fits with your educational aspirations? When in doubt, you should ask for help from us, from other people in your school and household life. But I did put an asterisk on there for a reason. Here are your asterisks when it comes to asking for help. Make sure that you are the person who is applying when you submit your application to any school, our school, any school. Um, we get it all the time where someone's writing doesn't really match what their teacher or recommender says about them. And it, it just gets a little clunky. We encourage you to be honest in this process because we value and prioritize authenticity. We are not bringing applicants to our campus. We are bringing future community members to our campus. We want to learn who you'd be as a community member, not just the shiny picture you're going to paint for us when you apply. I would encourage you to have someone look at what you submit, if that's possible, but don't have someone else work on what you submit. You should be the person who is doing the legwork in applying to college. Yes, it's a hard process, and yes, use the resources that are available to you in order to make that process a little easier on yourself. A little bit about what it's going to look like when you get into the Common App, you will be asked to select an admission plan. We have three different admission plans at Center, early decision, early action, and regular decision. The only one of those that's binding is early decision. What we mean by binding is you sign a contract in conjunction with a parent or guardian and your school counselor that says, if Center admits me and I have a feasible financial aid package, I will attend Center. I will not attend any other school. I will withdraw all other applications to those schools. And as you can see, 
the deadlines for application are there on your screen, as well as the notification date. Early action is non-binding, regular decision is non-binding. Some folks just like to hear from us earlier. So if you get us all of your information for that early action deadline, we will consider you on that timeline. And if not, you have until January 15th to apply regular decision with the final admission notification happening around mid-March. So once you finish the Common App and click Submit under your chosen admission plan, there are some other bits and pieces that we need to evaluate your application. The three things that you see on the left here in pink are things that we are expecting to receive from your school. These are not things that you are necessarily expected to hunt down, but if your school has a specific process for requesting that these materials be sent to us, we expect that you're gonna take care of that process because we can't keep track of all of the high schools around the world. But those three things are your high school transcript or transcripts if you transferred, your secondary school report, which is filled out by your guidance counselor, and a mid-year report if you're applying regular decision to see how you've done throughout the fall. If you are an international applicant for whom English is not your first language, you do have to submit official results from your TOEFL, IELTS, or DET, and those minimums are there on the screen as well, a 90 in the TOEFL, a 7.0 in IELTS, or a 115 DET. There is also the question of test scores. I know this is a really wordy slide. I'm not going to um, say that there was a better way to do this, but I wanted to be as clear as possible. This is all directly from the center website. So if you have specific questions about our test optional policy, please check out the FAQ. It is very robust, but these are some very important things. Center has a do no harm test optional policy. What that means for us is that submitting standardized test scores does just give us an additional data point in the process. And we are going to decide after reviewing your application if including your test scores will improve your evaluation. If it will, awesome. If it doesn't, we will ignore those scores and go with the original evaluation. This whole process is designed to be of the greatest benefit to you. If you choose not to submit scores, all that's going to happen is we're gonna put more emphasis on other elements of the application. So, and this is, in, this is bold, italicized and highlighted for a reason. Submitting standardized test scores will not in any way negatively impact the evaluation of your application. Submitting your scores can only help you. I know that there are lots of questions about how this plays out. I'd encourage you to check out the FAQ online and also get in touch with your assigned admission counselor. We're here and we're happy to help. This is the general uh, email address for our admission office. I would encourage you to be in touch um, if you have those questions. And thank you for your attention to this nuts and bolts part. And now you're going to hear um, from re some really phenomenal colleagues and friends of mine led by Annie Murphy. Um, and I'm gonna turn things over to you, Annie. Wonderful. Thank you, Thomas, I appreciate it. I am going to be joined here in just a moment by four of our fantastic students who are gonna have a lovely panel discussion with us today. So if Hannah, Sarah, Matt, and Sharon, if you guys would turn on your cameras, let's see you, great. Wonderful, thank you. So good to see you guys. Um, give me just one second here, perfect. All right, well, um, I'm gonna get started with having, well, let, uh, let me introduce myself. Um, my name is Annie Murphy. I'm a member of our admission team here. I'm also a center alum. Um, I'm excited to be with you because I think our students are fantastic. Um, their stories are really what is what this is all about. And I'm excited for you guys to hear from them. So I am going to invite our panelists to introduce themselves. Um, Hannah, would you get started for us, please? Hi everyone, my name is Hannah. I'm a senior and I'm an international studies major and I have an African and African American studies minor. Um, and I'm involved in a bunch of different clubs and organizations on campus. Great, all right, Sarah. 
Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sarah. I'm a junior and I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, and I'm an anthropology slash sociology and environmental studies double major with a Spanish minor. Um, and I am also involved in a few different things on campus, including Center Ambassadors, um, Greek Life, and then a few other clubs as well. Awesome, how about Matt? Hey everyone, my name is Matt Kowalski. I am a junior from Clarksville, Tennessee. And right now I'm majoring in behavioral neuroscience uh, following the pre-med track. And on campus, I'm involved with a lot of things from badminton club to giving tours and also Greek life. Awesome, and last but not least, Sharon. Hi everyone, um, I'm Sharon. I am an international student from Ethiopia. I am a sophomore um, and I am planning on majoring in math or data science or maybe even both, we'll see. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm also involved in a bunch of clubs on campus as well. Great, well, thank you guys. Um, so I'm gonna get started. Uh, one of the things about Center that I think makes us a bit unique is the percentage of our students that live on campus. 98%, pretty much everybody calls our campus home away from home. That does some things to the campus culture that, that I do think sets Center apart. It makes us a, a very lively community. Students are, are often on campus, involved in lots of things that uh, matter to them. Um, so I, I'm curious, Sarah, so Sarah, you serve on the staff of our residence life office. So you're an RA or a resident assistant, um, and, and you're influential in helping students get to know center, kind of helping students adjust. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how you think the residential culture of center really influences the student experience here? Sure. Um, so yes, I'm a residence director on campus. So I'm basically like the RA for the RAs. Um, mm -hmm. So I oversee four RAs on a section of Center's campus. Um, and I served as a first year RA last year um, for first year women. Um, so I think that the residential experience at Center is really unique um, because we're very intentional about building community. Um, so that looks like at least once a month hall programming that RAs put on for their halls. Um, students of every age also very are very intentional about building that community for first year students in particular. Um, and we have hall meetings and we really try to foster a positive and supportive community in our residence halls in particular as well. That's awesome, thank you. And, and Matt, you also work in a similar capacity. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, what you think the people on your hall might be up to on any given weekend? What's kind of that weekend experience like? Can you talk us through what that might be like? Yeah, absolutely. So this year I have kind of a mild hall. Um, so normally on weekends, my residents like to stay in. Um, the other last weekend I saw a few um, hook up their computer to the TV in our common room and they were just watching movies, hanging out, having a good time. But a lot of them like to go out and sort of have a good time on campus. Um, there's always things to do on the weekends. Our Student Activities Council does a really great job setting up things here on campus. Um, like last night was trivia and tonight they rented out the Danville, or the Danville Movie Theater and they're gonna be hosting a uh, viewing of Shang-Chi, the new uh, Marvel movie. So that's pretty exciting. I heard that a few of them were gonna go to that. Um, but yeah, they always have stuff to do on weekends even if it's just you know relaxing in their dorm rooms. Awesome, thanks. Um, Sharon and Hannah, would you describe a favorite event of yours that's on campus? Of course. I was nodding aggressively <laughs> when Matt <laughs> talked about the movies today. So it definitely the Student Activity uh, Council and Center, they do a lot and uh, like they throw a lot of like events for like weekends and stuff and you're if you don't want to be bored, like they, there's something going on to do over the weekends. Uh, my absolute favorite was when we had zip lining. I think I went thrice that day. Oh, it was so much fun. Like <laughs> It's like all the favorite people in the world that you like always spend your time with, but now you're zip lining. I mean, and on campus. So I love, uh, one of my favorite activities would be like sack events on weekends. Great, awesome. Anna, what about you? Um, so my favorite event just happened. It's kind of, it's called Expo. So at the very beginning of the year, we 
take the street that runs down the middle of campus and close it off and everybody sets up different tables and all the clubs and organizations and like local organizations and restaurants will come in and it's like first of all fed me for like three days because they give you so much free food and candy I still have candy in my room from it um, but people give you like free things and you can sign up for any club or organization on campus which really helps with like inclusivity and making sure that like every single club is represented so you're not going to miss anybody um, as you walk down the street and it's just really fun to see what people are passionate about here um, what like maybe their internship what they did for their internship or what their greek life um, organization is doing and yeah i'm still in a bunch of the clubs that i signed up for freshman year um, the equestrian club is one that most of my friends don't know I'm a part of because I don't really ride horses, but I still volunteer at a horse barn that I found out about through um, Expo. So it's a great way. Um, it's in the first like week of school. So it's a great way to just get involved as soon as you get on campus. Oh, that's awesome. I did not know that about the equestrian uh, involvement that you had, Anna. That's awesome. Great. Well, um, well, another thing that I think is a, an incredible part of the center culture and the center experience is, um, of course, the academics. This, this place is all about academics. It's, it's making sure that students have just really transformational educations, that you are getting the kind of personal attention, the, um, you know, that your people are invested in you and invested in your success. So um, I would love to hear from one, maybe two of you, if you could share an example of how you have received um, personalized guidance or mentoring at Center. Maybe it's from a staff member, maybe it's from a faculty member, but talk a little bit about that particular person, how they helped you, um, and kind of how that relationship has developed. Who wants to chime in on that? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so as a sophomore, I took to a course where you like took two classes with these two professors. Um, on mass incarceration, which is something that I'm really passionate about. Um, and we didn't have any classes beyond that offered at Center because it is a smaller school. So sometimes certain topics there, we kind of take all the classes offered. But my professor pulled me aside and asked me if I'd be interested in pursuing research. Um, and so that was really exciting for me just because I had gone kind of gone beyond the classes offered. And so I was able to do research for a semester with him and then I applied and got my research funded for my senior year. So your senior year, you can apply for something called John C. Young and you can get your research funded. Um, so now I get to work with him even more. So we're going on a year and a half of my research now, but it's just exciting to be able to work with um, someone who's really talented and can mentor me in research so that when I move on past college, I have that hands-on experience and I have that ability to um, talk about my research experience and what I've researched, but it's also really nice that he pulled me aside. It wasn't, it really meant a lot for him to believe in me and to know how passionate I was and to reach out to me and ask me if I was interested in pursuing this. Um, Cause I never thought that I would be someone who could do research, but that's the special part about center is that it's for everyone. Um, and your professors, when they see that passion in you, they really want to foster that and make sure that you can pursue it um, as far as you want to take it. That's awesome. Uh, Sharon, I think you want to chime in on that one? I definitely do. Um, honestly, I think it's not like you don't just get help from like one person. Everyone is so willing to help you. And like, as long as you express that like a need to be helped, everyone is always so willing and would like push for you to do anything that you dream about. Like for me, I've had support from like a wide range of people. My RAs, uh, my RA in my first year, she's the one who told me about course scheduling and things along that line so that I actually graduate with the classes I need to take. <laughs> and when it comes to, uh, when I talk about things that I'm passionate about, when it comes to research, a lot of my professors are like, oh, you have to take this class now so that you can do this, so that you can do that. Going to office hours and speak office hours and like speaking with them in terms of research, in terms of your classes, like everyone is just so willing to like help you and just like they care. It's weird, like you're just like loved for no reason you're just loved and like people just want to help you and like I think definitely the caring and community and center is some 
like a huge, huge thing. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Um, so the classroom dynamic at Center, I'm wondering if one of you can tell us a little bit about, well, can you describe what that dynamic is in the classroom? And is there, do you think that there are any qualities that, that Center students have in common when it comes to their academics? Yeah, Sarah, go ahead. Um, yeah, I would say the classroom dynamic is something that's really special. Um, I personally have had really positive experiences with the maximum class size being 30 at center. Um, so I've had, you know, classes that have gone up to that with like gen ed, general education requirement classes, but I've also had a class as small as seven. Um, so that was not even an upper level class, just a Spanish class that I took um, in the spring of my first year. Um, and I think that kind of small classroom environment really allows center students to engage in a different way, um, engage with each other, engage with our professors, and really just be curious. Um, and so I think that would be the thing I would say about center students in the classroom is that we really are curious about, you know, learning more about what we're talking about and kind of pushing the bounds of what might be like in the textbook or in the lecture and things like that as well. Sharon, you wanna chime in on that? Yes, I have so much to say about center. <laughs> um, <laughs> when it comes to classes, I will promise you everyone has strong opinions, which is a good thing because you're, the conversations in a classroom are like, wow, I've never actually thought about it like that. Oh, and like if you have a lot of like, because everyone comes from all over the world and all over the United States, there's so many different opinions. And then you're like, wow, I've actually, like you come out of it and you're like, wow, I learned something today. <laughs> um, and also I will say that um, center is academically challenging. So you will come out with like confused in classes, but that's a good thing because first of all, you get to learn, but also you, you kind of, some of my best friends right now are people that I struggled in calculus with and <laughs> in classes. <laughs> so that 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 going through that academic rigor, not only will you get like the grades and like the you know what you need, but you also make friends like that deep connection, I promise you. <laughs> That's awesome. Great. Thank you. Um, so another feature that Center has um, is a huge focus on helping students, empowering students, and supporting students to study abroad. That's something that we've invested in as a school, we think can be an incredibly impactful part of a college education. Of course, our ability to administer, um, you know, safe study abroad programs has been impacted over, you know, during the COVID-19 pandemic, but we're up and rolling again. Um, and can anyone here on this call tell me um, a study abroad experience that you were able to participate in or one that you're looking forward to? Matt, go ahead. Yeah, so I have not been able to travel abroad yet, unfortunately. Um, I was planning on traveling abroad this upcoming center term. However, the trip was canceled um, due to reasons, um, but <laughs> we're gonna head to uh, New Zealand to study volcanoes. And that is definitely way outside of my comfort zone. I mean, you know, being a behavioral neuroscience major, it's just not, you know, my area of specialties, I guess, but it was such an exciting time planning for the trip and like getting the packing list ready and everything. Um, but they're postponing it to next year. So hopefully I'll be able to go pretty soon, but it's definitely looking like a really interesting course about volcanoes. That's awesome. Great. All right. Okay, well, um, sorry, here we go. Um, let's talk a little bit about, um, yes, yeah, so study abroad is a huge focus of ours, but also helping students to get valuable internship experiences. Um, and I know Sarah and Hannah, um, you guys have both had internship experiences. I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about those, how you were um, supported in securing those internship opportunities. Uh, I'd love to hear. Yeah, I can go first. Um, so I actually participated in an internship over this past summer. Um, so the summer of 2021. Um, and I originally applied for it through Center. So my internship um, was with Center, but also with um, 
an, an institution, I guess you would call it, called the Shepherd Higher Education Consortium on Poverty, um, also known as SHEP, when you don't want to say the whole thing out. Um, so I applied in the fall of my first year originally to go and do the internship over the summer after my sophomore year, um, but then COVID hit, all of that. So I decided to postpone it um, just so that I could have an in-person experience. And so I was able to do that this past summer. I did um, my internship in Washington, DC. So Shep matched each intern with um, a nonprofit organization around the country. And my internship was with a nonprofit in DC that's working to end chronic homelessness. Um, so I was serving as a case manager on the social services team, interacting with guests experiencing homelessness on a daily basis. Um, trying to connect them with services and do things like that. Um, and I definitely could not have done that internship without center's support. Um, I wouldn't have been able to apply for it in the first place. And then the support in the decision to postpone it. And then throughout the summer, making sure that I was having a positive experience and then reflecting on it after the fact as well. Awesome. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks. Um, yes, yeah, so internships are one of my favorite things to talk, to talk about. Um, I am on my seventh internship that I've done while, uh, during my time at Center, and it has totally been everything through Center. Um, so my first internship that I got actually was at an organization called Kentucky Refugee Ministries, and they just have developed this great relationship with Center students. So Center students have been interning there for the past decade, I think, and they have just made such a good impression that as soon as you put your application in and it says Center College, Kentucky Refugee Ministries is just like, of course, we're going to accept you. Like, we love Center students. And so <laughs> it's really cool that that path had been paved and opened up for me. And it really meant a lot because I was able to get my foot in the door um, with something that I was really passionate about because of past Center students. Um, and then another internship I had, my boss was actually a Center alumni. And that um, is an internship that he kind of holds for center students. He's like, this is not for students from another school. That's one way I wanna give back to center is that this internship is for me to mentor and help center students, which is just also really special because um, our alumni really care about us um, and they really wanna give back to the community. And they offer um, a lot of times internships to center students because they know our reputation and have that connection with us. Um, which is awesome. But this past summer, I was also in DC, Sarah and I got to hang out a little bit. Um, but I was interning for a US embassy um, in Rwanda. So unfortunately, it was from DC, not from Rwanda. But originally, I was going to be moving across the world for the summer. Um, and our Center for Career and Professional Development actually offers internship funding. So the internship is unpaid. So it, it would be really hard for me to relocate to Rwanda for a summer. Um, on my own dime, but the center offers funding for internships, which is really, really helpful because a lot of great internships out there are unpaid, which is really unfortunate, um, but they offer that because they don't want money to be what has to hold you back. They want you to have that opportunity to go abroad or to go intern in DC and not have to worry about the financial constraints. Great, thank you. Sharon. Um, I also wanted to touch on like research because um, internships are amazing and, but also people do like research over the summer. And also another thing that happens is that you will get funded to do research on campus, or even if you wanna um, do your research with another university and pair it up with something that's already at center and like do something, it's all possible. Like there's nothing that you can't do. If you have the dream and you know what you wanna do, you're like, just start asking and it'll, it'll kind of like, it's like a, like a puzzle. It will all kind of come together. So if you are interested in like doing research and like um, going to grad school and you wanna be like published before you wanna do that, that's actually a possibility and you get paid for it so that's yeah if that's something you, you all are passionate about that's awesome thank you well um i want to so as you guys were introducing yourselves there was a wide variety of different things that you guys are involved in on campus um you could run things you do run things <laughs> um i wonder if each of you could tell me just about if um, one of the areas of involvement that you have on campus, um, why it's meaningful to you, what you like about it. Um, if we'll just we'll just go around 
the room. Maybe Matt, would you like to get us started? Yeah, absolutely. So I think that um, the, it's, I guess it's not really a clever organization. It's more of a board. Um, the board that's had the most impact on me so far is the Student Mental Health Advisory Board, uh, which I'm a member of. And essentially we act as a liaison between the students and the counseling services here at Center to sort of match the needs of the student population to the counseling services output. And that has been such an awesome experience for me because I get to meet with counselors and talk about, you know, what I think should be going on based on the reception that I'm getting from the student body. And it definitely really hits home for me because this is something that I would like to do in my future. So I think that it's really great to be getting exposure to this kind of thing right now. That's awesome. Thank you, Matt. Let's see, Sarah, how about you? Yeah, um, so one of the things that I do on campus, um, I serve as a Spanish tutor. So I started in that um, last year. I've been doing it for about a year now. Um, and I think it's, it's a really meaningful opportunity for me because I have definitely gained a lot of confidence in my abilities since starting that position. Um, and it also kind of represents how the faculty believe in us at Center. Um, so my one of my Spanish professors is the one who coordinates the Spanish tutoring lab. And she asked me if I would be interested in doing it at the end of my first year. And I was kind of shocked um, because I you know, had only taken two Spanish classes at Center, both of them with her. Um, and I definitely thought I had, you know, improvement that I needed to get to, but she thought that I, you know, was qualified enough to be helping my peers. And I think over the past year, with all that's come and gone with COVID and all of that, it's been difficult to navigate, but she's been really supportive. And I feel like I've learned a lot as well and been able to support my peers. So that's been really great. Awesome. Thanks, Sarah. Sharon, you want to tell us about something that you're involved in? Yes, 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 of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that I that I absolutely adore doing is I am the vice president of the Black STEM Coalition, which is uh, an organization on campus that um, like helps, like helps, and it's like a community of people of color that are STEM majors. And um, what we do essentially is in that community we talk about we bring we make convocations and we bring in new voices and we also have like a mentorship program where there are bigs and littles and then we talk about our experiences and how to like being a person of color in STEM and an underrepresented person in STEM is kind of like hard because you don't really have that kind of opportunities and a lot of us are like first generation students and having that community of people that under not only understand but are like pushing one another to like like, yes, you can do it. Other people are doing it, you know, and things along that line makes me so like, me, oh my God, it wakes me up every day and it keeps me going and I love it. I love it. Great. And Hannah, how about you? Yeah, so since my freshman year, I've been involved, been involved in Best Buddies on campus. So we get to work with adults with special needs um, from the community. So it's really awesome. They get to come to center once a month and we host different events and parties and we're paired up with a buddy and we just get to hang out and um, have a great time. It's been really sad during COVID because we don't always get to see our buddies, but we do letter writing and we do FaceTimes. And so it's really exciting. And then that is also connected to um, what I do through the equestrian club um, and it's therapeutic horseback riding for um, kids and adults with special needs. And so that is also something that I do in the Danville community. And so that's part of what I love about Center is that a lot of our extracurriculars are also engaging the Danville community and reaching beyond just campus and in, like being able to work with the community to build up um, everyone, so. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. Well, um, unfortunately we have to wrap up. I know you guys, um, I could talk with you all day. I appreciate your insight, your, um, just your candid responses, thank you. Uh, we will close out. If you could choose one word to describe center, what would it be? And we will start with uh, Sharon. What's your one word? Definitely family, because okay. center, I, I, I got a whole family of people that love me and that I love just as much, if not more. 
uh, I have found a family here. Thank you. Um, Hannah, how about you? What's your word? I would say passionate. Everybody's passionate about different things, but we get to work um, to support each other through our diverse set of passions. Love it. And Sarah? I was thinking about using that one, um, but I would say <laughs> supportive, um, kind of on the same coin. Um, I think center, everybody's interested in different things, like Hannah said, um, and we're all really excited about these things, but we're all excited to support each other in the things that we may not be involved in as well. Awesome. And Matt, how about you? Close us off. Yeah, so to sort of echo everyone, I'm going to choose uh, together because that's sort of the feeling that I first got when I stepped on campus. Um, it feels like, you know, everybody here is supporting everybody else and we're all just one big team. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Um, have a great rest of your weekends. Thanks for spending some time with us. Um, I am going to next introduce my colleague, David DeWitt. He is going to give us a, um, some brief information about financial aid at Center. Hi, David. Hello. Thank you, Annie. Yes. I am David, and uh, I, I'm hopeful that most, if not all of you, uh, of our guests today have uh, decided Center is a place you, you'd like to enroll <laughs> and come join us, be a student. You might be thinking that uh, the cost of a private college uh, could be a hurdle that you need to overcome. It's, it's my role uh, to try to... Uh, give you some information that will be reassuring uh, and help you understand that uh, a private college uh, does not necessarily cost more uh, than, uh, than other options you may be looking. I am going to share my screen now. And I'm hopeful that you can see uh, a, a page on our website that is center dot edu slash cost. I've put uh, a couple of, of links uh, into the chat uh, section so you can, can find these yourself. My, I, instead of using slides, I wanted to use our website because I wanted to share with you uh, resources that would be readily available to you, something you could access uh, at any point. Uh, so starting with uh, our, our page on uh, uh, you'll see a page there that says cost of attendance. And as we scroll down a little bit, um, a big point I want to make is that we invest a lot of our own resources in trying to make a center education affordable um, for uh, students um, that want to be at center that will take advantage of the opportunities we offer there. The vast majority of our students will receive some sort of financial assistance for some students, the help they get might be entirely through scholarship opportunities. For other folks, um, it might be entirely a function of what, what gets termed need-based financial aid, a uh, function of filing the, the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid. Um, we, uh, uh, we make aid in both forms uh, readily available to students here at Center. The, um, the sticker price, if you will, um, uh, for center, the total cost of attendance for the current school year, you can see uh, total cost is $57,600. Um, the good news is, again, uh, fewer than 10% of the students enrolled at center are actually paying sticker price. And I'm going to bounce to a different page here uh, to try to to bring that into sharper relief for you. These are some actual financial aid packages um, for, uh, uh, for students currently attending Center College. Um, you'll notice um, there's different sorts of aid here. Uh, gift aid includes both scholarship and, uh, and uh, grants. Grants can come from a variety of sources, from the federal government, in some, time, some cases state government, uh, often uh, uh, from the college uh, itself. Uh, so this is a combination probably of, of uh, both scholarship and grant. So you'll notice with, we give you a household income here, break down the package, and the actual cost to this student is just over $4,000. Um, 
another example here. Again, you can examine these more uh, at your leisure um, with a household income in this range. Total cost of attendance ends up being right at $10,000, um, much, much less than that sticker price. And then even a third example, even with a um, what I would consider a very healthy household income, um, the cost after aid uh, is just over, well, about, as you can see, 14,400. Um, this particular page will also, there, there, there's more detail you can get into, more links to click on. The scholarship opportunities that we offer here at Center come in three broad categories. And again, you can get, get much deeper into this and gather much more information by, uh, by clicking on links and going into the website. Uh, general merit scholarships, the, the biggest scholarships we have to offer and naturally the most competitive, and then scholarships based on particular interests, talents, or involvements that you might have. I'm, I'm working, as you can see, I'm working my way up this page rather than down because I wanted to share those uh, uh, sample aid packages with you first. Definitions for the different types of aid you can find here as well. Uh, again, grants and scholarships get referred to as gift aid, loans and work study um, typically are called self-help in financial aid parlance. Um, in a financial aid package, you can accept or deny any piece of the aid award. So if um, uh, you, you, you don't have to take the loans, if you can make it work without taking advantage of the loan, uh, but lots of students do, and we try not to burden our students with too much loan, uh, do a nice job with that. Um, again, more resources, you can go deeper on that. This page also includes a timeline for financial aid. Uh, in an earlier session, Thomas talked about the, the application process, depending on which application plan you use. Um, uh, the goal is to complete the financial aid application process on the same timeline as you complete your application. And then you can see when notification dates will happen. Um, we, there are two um, primary financial aid tools or forms that colleges and universities use. One is the CS profile. We use uh, the free application for federal student aid, um, often referred to as the FAFSA, uh, because it is free. We also have our own supplemental financial aid form. Uh, some colleges do, some don't. It's a simple form relative to the FAFSA, uh, but it allows us to collect a little bit more information that's really useful in our process. Um, that's one of those things you'll just sort of have to keep track of on a spreadsheet when you decide where you're going to apply, whether an additional form is necessary or not, and which federal form the college uh, uses. Uh, again, I'll show you just the banner page uh, or banner of that particular page. And I'm going to bounce back to my first page, shows cost of attendance, because if you go just beyond the, the actual sticker price there, there's a button here for estimate your cost, cost. And if you're to click on that button, it will take you to this page, which gives you tools on our website for you to get a sense this weekend of what uh, a center education might cost uh, for your particular family circumstance. There are two tools. My intuition is, uh, is sort of the quick and dirty version. Uh, you can do it very quickly, um, probably with information off the top of your head, uh, and it'll give you a kind of a ballpark sense of, of what a financial aid package will look like. The net price calculator, uh, it goes a little more in depth, a little more detailed, take a little more time for you to fill out, but will give you a, a, more, uh, a more detailed response. Uh, and on that page, you can go directly to those tools um, by clicking on those links. Uh, and I am, that's, that's all. I just wanted to give you an overview of those pages. I wanted you to know you can get to those on our website. If at any point along the way, uh, you're, you're working through this process, I want to reiterate what you've heard from other folks. If you have questions or concerns, 
please let us know. Uh, the folks in the, in, in the admission office at center want to be helpful. If you ask us questions that we can't answer and we get in over our head, we'll connect you with folks in our financial aid office uh, and, and uh, avail you of their expertise. Um, I am now gonna pass this on to my friend and colleague, uh, Clay Taylor, who I think is gonna wrap us up for the day. David, um, and thank you all for joining us today this, as well this afternoon. So with change comes opportunity. When you think about the process of choosing a college home and evolving from a high school student to a budding undergraduate scholar, I want you to think with intention about opportunity, with what that means to you and how that takes shape. My name is Clay Taylor and I'm an assistant director of admission and I'm also a 2016 graduate from Center. And I have the pleasure to discuss opportunities with students every day. It is one of the greatest joys of working in the admission office here at Center College. Accessing college opportunities doesn't begin when you step foot on your college, on your chosen college campus. It begins with the application process. Your college application is a vehicle to communicate your hopes and dreams, in addition to highlighting your academic preparation. It is your chance to distinguish yourself, unveil what inspires you, and reveal what makes you special and unique. Colleges are eager, are eager to learn the real you by virtue of piecing together your application materials and your interactions with you. We hope today's section, session reinforced how much we value the holistic approach to admission. The Center College community is comprised of curious and interesting people, and we're eager to learn more about you and how you define and embrace opportunities. They're plentiful at Center, and our staff stands ready to help you explore these possibilities. Thank you so much for joining us today. For those who joined in late, fear not, this will be uploaded to YouTube and they'll be sent in a link here shortly and um, sometime throughout next week. So again, thank you so much for joining us today. I believe this is the end of our session and um, here soon, shortly, there will be a screen selected to show our um, social media sites. You can find us on any social media at, at, at Admission Center. So it's at Admission Center. Thank you so much for joining today.